Hello everyone, myself I am Krithika. In this video, I am going to explain you the structure of Java programming and some topics related to that. The structure starts with class and class name. Class is a keyword. Class name, I am giving it as my, my program. In between that, bracket, let's type the program. So, always have the habit of opening and closing the braces and in between that type the program. So, when we do like this, this will avoid the mismatch of brackets in our program. The program starts its execution from the main method. So, it is the entry point. Main method takes a parameter. The parameter, it's a variable name, I am giving it as ARG. This parameter is to receive the command line arguments from the user. The data type to this array is, I am giving as string because java accept all the inputs as string only the return type to this main method is void it doesn't return any value hence the return type is mentioned here as void when the method is prefixed with static key keyword it means that that is a static method the advantage of defining a method as static is it avoids creating an object to invoke a method the access specifier to this main method is public so that you can access this main from any place. It is accessible to all. So let me repeat it once again. So the program starts from class and class name. Class is a keyword. Class name is what we are giving there. And inside the class comes a main method. So this is the entry point to execute our program. The return type to this main is void. It doesn't return any value. Hence it is given as void. The main is declared as static method because it avoids creating an object to invoke this main method. Access specifier public to, to make this main to accessible to all. This main takes a parameter. This parameter is to receive and store the command line arguments from the user. So next we are going to display a welcome message in the screen. For displaying that the output stream is system.out.println and in between this within bracket mention, mention the content to be displayed. So I am giving it as welcome to Java and end your statement with a semicolon. So this is a simple program. So after typing a program the next one is you have to save the file then you have to compile and then you have to execute. So to save the file save the file with the class name. So the class name is my program dot java so always save your file with the class name so you can see in the right hand side when the file is saved it creates a source file the name is my program now the next step is we have to compile this java file for compiling it is java c file name dot java that is java c means java compiler file name is my program so pro gr am java c file name dot java press enter so after compiling this java file creates one more file in your folder it is class file it is also called as bytecode file so once a file is compiled successfully it creates a bytecode file now let's execute our program for executing java file name Yes, so we receive the output, welcome to Java. So the thing is that, create a program, save the file with .java extension, while saving the file, save the file with the class name. The class name and file name is to be given same, normally we will be giving like this. And then after com for compiling this file, it is java c file name .java. Once the file is compiled successfully, it creates a bytecode file. And for executing our program, java and then file name is to be given okay now i said that this arj is to receive the command line argument so let's see now how to receive this command line argument and where to give this command line argument see here after compiling and executing we are giving it as java my prg so next to this my prg itself we can give some value to the program the program's input can be given here next to this my program so it is called as command line argument so here i can give n number of arguments so let's see how to give the value and how to receive the value through command line argument see here how to give the value means java my program here 
I can give the input Java made easy. So here each one of this Java made easy. Each one of this is taken as a separate token and this will be stored in the array ARG in each of the index value. So this is how, how the value can be given. Then let's see how to receive the value inside the program. So as I said that this inputs will be stored in the array ARG. So to receive this input again output stream system dot out dot println so the value will be stored in arg index value 0 1 2 sequently first value is yes, let's give the string and concordinate with the with the stored value the available value is there in arg of 0 so this will store the first argument to receive the second argument system dot out dot println second value is concoordinated the second value is in second index arg of 1 so likewise you can store n number of arguments in the array so time being we received only first two values so let's save the file and then after saving it after modifying your program compile your file it successfully compiled and let's give the command line argument java ec programming so you can see the first one is the string what you are given in the line number 5 an output string there the next one is first value is java so here i have given three values in the command line it will be stored in the array in the index value of 0 java will be stored index value 1 easy in and 2 programming will be stored so here we have displayed only ARG of 0 and 1 so that the output contains only Java and EC. So this is how, how you have to give the command line value and how to receive the value in the programming. Okay, now the second thing is over. Third one, I say that, uh, I said that the class name and file name should be same. So do we have to give the class name and file name as save in Java? Is it a compulsion? Will it work when we change the name? That was the third one to be discussed. So the answer is no. So there is no compulsion that we have to give the class name and file name as save, same in Java. You can change it also. Let's see the example of that now. So here I am typing a program class I am giving the class name as my class as usual access specifier public static keyword return type void main method data type string array to store the command line value inside that output stream system dot out dot println class name differs from file name so input string is also given okay so let me save this file see here the cla uh, class name is my class but I am going to save this file as myfile.java save so you can see in the window here so the file is saved the file name is my file and here also you can see the my file in the window Okay, so now let's compile the file. 
Java C file name is myfile.java. Yes, it's compiled. See, you can see here in the window that after compiling the uh, source file, that's my file, you can see the bytecode file name as my class. So here you can see the bytecode name as class, the class file name is my class. This my class is the name of the class what you are given in your program. So now let's execute our program java so usually while executing we will give java file name so here java what is the class name here my class yes we receive the output the thing is that so while compiling a file you should give java c file name dot java and while executing you have to give the class file name that's a bytecode file name is to be given that is the concept so that it shows that you can give the class name and file name differently it can differ there is no compulsion that we have to give both the names similar thank you